Hello, and welcome to the Ministry Action Plan series. This is a six session series that will help you determine how you can best serve the Lord in the local church. Now, this is session one, and we will have a total of six sessions. At the end of our time together across these six sessions, it is our hope and desire that you will know what your map is. What is your ministry action plan? One of these six ideas and concepts uh, is yours, a motivator, provider, energizer, solver, developer, or a distributor. Which one are you? Maybe you already have some thoughts about that, but stay tuned and walk with us through this time together and you will begin to understand. I'm a golfer and I don't know how many of you play golf, but uh, every, every time you hit a golf ball, there's an area on the head of the golf club that's called the sweet spot. Now, you can see in this picture, uh, the red area is the sweet spot. That if you hit the ball uh, in that area, if you connect with the ball in that red area, you're going to get uh, the greatest distance, the most accuracy. You're going to uh, get all of the things that you want. It's the sweet spot. You're going to enjoy golfing if you can hit it in that area. However, um, that doesn't always happen. Uh, I can tell you that for sure. And if you've played, you know that too. Uh, there's some yellow areas where you'll get uh, you'll get an okay shot. Uh, it, it's okay, but it's not great. Uh, and you can uh, you you will survive the game, uh, but you may not enjoy the game. And the same thing is true as we are walking through uh, our life and our service to the Lord. That if you are not in your sweet spot that you you'll survive it, but you won't be thriving. It is our hope and our desire that you would be thriving in your experiences with the Lord, on your journey with the Lord, that you would be thriving in that. So what does that mean? Well, first, let me introduce you a little bit to who we are at First Baptist Church and just let you know of a couple of things. It is our vision to see every person in Crowley become a disciple maker. Not that you just become one, uh, just become a disciple, but that you learn how to make disciples also. And your gifting and your abilities and your passions and all these things help will help decide who you are and how you can be a part of that process together. But that's our dream. We want to see everybody in Crowley become a disciple maker. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to love people so they move forward on life's journey. You have friends and family members, some that uh, really love Jesus and some that don't know Jesus and some who don't care to know about Jesus. That's okay. That's life. That's humanity, right? Well, how are we going to help them move forward in their spiritual journey? Well, we need to love them. Jesus was asked uh, what the greatest commandments are. And he said to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor. These are the two biggest things that we need to be concerned about. And so we want to love people so they move forward on life's journey. This is uh, very important for us. Uh, we value uh, a few things around here. We value relationships. We value community engagement, spiritual development, and diversity. Now, those last two uh, are be, are we're doing that right now as we are wanting to help you spiritually develop and move forward on your journey, but also uh, that anybody of any age can serve the Lord. Anybody of any age can can handle that. Our commitment to you is in a simple acrostic called Arise. Accept, recognize, inspire, serve, and evangelize. This is our commitment to you, my commitment to you, that I want to uh, do all of these things. This is a way that we go about loving you, is that we accept, recognize, inspire, serve, and evangelize, and helping you understand all of the things that you need to know. Well, you may have a question, and that is this. Why is a map important? Why do I need a ministry action plan? Well, I believe that the Bible teaches that everyone has a responsibility to the whole group. And this is very important. No one person should be doing everything, but everybody should be doing one thing. And that's very important for us to understand. Uh, this is shown in scripture. Moses was leading millions of people uh, across a desert. And he was so involved in taking care of all of the decision 
processes and making all the decisions. And his father-in-law came, and you can go read this in Exodus 18. His father-in-law came and said, look, this isn't good. You, you can't do all this. You're going to die out here trying to make all of these decisions yourself. And so he proposed a plan to him. And he said, you need to get some people that are capable of having, handling a thousand people and some that can handle a hundred, some that can handle 10. Uh, and if the person who handles 10 people can't answer the question, it goes to the, goes to the one that's more capable. And if he can't, it goes up the ladder and then it goes up the ladder. And if nobody can answer the question, Moses, well, then you can handle that. And so you need to train people that can train people that can train people. That's a disciple maker. And he said, find people that can enjoy their level of service in a way that they have that capacity and that competency and do that for them. Then Jesus comes along uh, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Jesus begins to do, do a similar thing. You know, they had they talk about crowds of 500 and then crowds of 120, but the most famous of all is that they have 12 disciples. He has 12 disciples that he spends a lot of time with. But did you know that even among the 12 disciples, there were three that he spent even more time with, Peter, James, and John? And so he, Jesus has three that, pour, that he pours into, and then they go at, with the 12 to the 120 to the 500. And then over in Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches, and then 5,000 people come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. And so we must understand this pattern. Then Paul will go, and he teaches the churches specifically over in Ephesians chapter 4. And he said that there are those that are called to leadership, and then they are does, they are there in order to train everybody else to do the ministry of the church, to do all the things that go on at church. And so I want to help you learn how to do your thing. What is your thing? That's what the ministry action plan is all about, is finding out what your thing is and then giving you the opportunity to get involved in doing the very thing that God wired you to do, the very thing that he wants you to do, and the very thing that we need you to do. You are very important because without you, we can't do all that God wants us to do. So here's your homework today. Just down below in the description section, you're going to see a link uh, to a personal strength assessment. And so before you watch session two, I want you to click on that and fill that out. Uh, and then, you're, then you'll be prepared for session two. Thank you for getting on board with this journey. I'm, I'm ready to help you on your journey. I'm excited to help you on your journey. I'm excited to see who you're going to become and what all you're going to be able to do for God as a result of walking through our time together. All right. I look forward to seeing you in session two.